In the previous video, we talked about what uh, Spring JPA was and we talked about what the JPA was in general. We also talked about the advantages of Spring JPA, Spring Data JPA has over JDBC where uh, for JDBC, you need to write native SQL queries and the Spring JPA takes care of all of that uh, implementations for you and all you need to do is have some function calls which can do all the stuff for you for cloud applications. So in this video, we'll be setting up our repository, the to-do repository, and we'll see all about the extra dependencies that we need to actually uh, build up our database and also the kind of database we'll be using. So let's get started. So first, uh, this is where we stopped in the previous video. We had uh, made a to-do repository, which was an interface. And now uh, we'll be doing uh, very little changes to this interface. Uh, we will uh, not be actually writing any uh, interface uh, function calls here. We'll just be extending from uh, a different repository provided by JPA, Spring Data JPA. And we'll just uh, get right ahead into using it. So, but first, Let's talk about the database which we'll be using for the next few videos. So the database which we'll be using is called as Apache Derby. So Apache Derby is an Apache DB subproject, which is uh, an open source relational database implemented entirely in Java and is available under the Apache license. So let's see why we'll be starting with, you know, Apache Derby and not, you know, MySQL. So well, Derby has a very small footprint, about 3.5 megabytes, which is really, really less for the base engine and embedded JDBC driver. So this uh, is something which we uh, you know value a lot because it's very fast and it's very quick to actually have uh, the database set up at runtime uh, by, this, by Spring. And you just have to implement a service, implement a repository, and Derby and Java and Spring takes care of all of that for you. So we will be getting rid of that, you know, uh, very bad arrays dot as list function, right? So next, uh, Derby is based on Java, JDBC and SQL standard. So we will have uh, Derby in a SQL standard. So we can assume that, you know, it will definitely ha uh, have the SQL implementations behind the scenes. Now, since Derby provides an embedded JDBC driver, it lets you embed Derby in any Java based solution. And that works perfectly because if you not only have a Spring Boot application, but you have a Spring Boot application that's communicating with a different Java application and both of them are running Derby, uh, then having this will be very easy for you to communicate with the other Java applications, talk to them and also, you know, uh, have a very simple connection where both of them work at ease. Derby also supports uh, the more familiar client server mode with Derby Network Client, JVD Driver and Network, Derby Network Server. This is something which is out of scope for this video or tutorial, so we'll not be uh, looking much into this. But if you want, the link for this uh, will be in the description and you can definitely go ahead. And by last, Derby is very easy to install, deploy and use. So this is uh, also very important for our uh, REST API tutorial because we want to learn how to build API, APIs and make sure that uh, the database part is being learned on the way. So now that uh, no, we're new to Derby, let's check out the start page and see how we actually get into it. So we have a lot of examples, demo how to use Derby with other products, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the first thing which we need to do for Derby is to actually have the dependency inside our pom.xml. So let's open up our pom.xml and add, let's add in some dependencies for ourselves. So the first one which we need dependency yeah the first one we need is something called as spring uh, boot data JPA. So for that we need a group ID and the next thing which we need is an artifact ID uh, let me spell dependency correctly uh, again great so now we need to have uh, the group ID and the artifact ID for spring boot data GPA so I have this right here already so that you know we don't waste any time so let me just pull that up so here we go so we have our spring boot framework which is the group from which we need it. So let's go and paste it here. The next thing which we need is the artifact ID, which is Spring Boot Starter Data JPA. 
So this is the name of the dependency, which is Spring Boot Starter Data GPA. So this is something which provides you all the uh, database function calls, methods, classes, interfaces out of the box, uh, just similar to Spring Boot Starter Web, which helps you start a Spring Boot project with very ease. So this will be actually helping us setting up our CRUD repository, uh, which actually help, will help you get started with how to use it. Now, the next thing which we need, the next dependency that we need is obviously Derby, Apache Derby. So let's actually add that now. So again, we need to have a dependency, so dependency. And let's close this. Oh, sorry, don't add starters. And cool. So we need a group ID. And the next thing which we need is an artifact ID. Great. And again, we spell dependency wrong. I don't know why I keep doing that. But great. And let's just copy Derby from here. So it's from org.apache.derby package. Uh, let's go and paste it here. And the name is Derby. And we also have a scope. So let's just copy the entire thing and close this. So here we need this one. Yeah. So this is what uh, are the two dependencies that we need to add to actually include uh, Spring Boot Data, JPA, and Derby inside our application. And now that it's, they are here, all you have to do is go to Maven and update project. And okay. So, you know, Maven actually gets the dependencies from the server and, and you know, adds them to your Maven dependencies list and you know that you can use it. So now let's see how uh, Apache Derby works. So the best part about, you know, having Derby or using Derby is that this is it. This is all you need to do to actually ha have Derby configured and set up in your uh, application. So basically, what Spring does when it you know when you start the server, when you write all your uh, when you are when you fin when you finish setting up our database and you know writing all the function calls etc etc is that it looks at the POM and sees whether it has uh, an in-memory database or an embedded database that it can use and. Since we only have uh, Derby inside our POM, it will assume that Derby is the one that we are using and set up and configure it for us at runtime. So that is how we take the advantage, uh, how we use the power of Derby to actually build a Spring Boot application with the database. Okay, great. So now that we have our POM ready uh, and we just need nothing else now, let's actually go and write some uh, code to actually set up our repository. So. As I said, we will not be writing anything inside the interface. We just have to extend from something. So it extends. Suppose something called as CRUD repository. And let me just import it. And this will need two things uh, in the implementation. The first will be uh, what kind of repository are we wanting here? So it's a to-do repository. So we need the to-do class. To actually for it to map uh, the uh, the things in to do so let me just open to do so we need to map uh, the id name summary description all of this to our application right so for that we need to give them give it a parameter of to do and the next thing which we need is the uh, data type of uh, the unique id which we have so for here the unique id is integer id which is an integer so we'll just put this as integer and we're good to go. Now, uh, we told the CRUD repository that, you know, the integer is the unique ID, but we haven't specified that here. So all we need to do is just have an ID annotation for our integer, and that will automatically take care or tell that, you know, this is an ID, which is by Java X persistence. Great. So uh, what did we learn or what did we do in this tutorial? So we had imported two things. First was Apache Derby, which is an embedded database written by SQL standard, which we'll be using later in the next upcoming videos. And we also uh, added a dependency called a Spring Boot Starter Data GPA. 
After that, we set up our CRUD repository where we extend from something called as a CRUD repository. So as you know, CRUD stands for Create, Update, Delete. And this repository will handle all the inter interface and the implementation for all the function calls that we're going to make to, you know, add a to do, add a task, delete a task, update a task, or, you know, add one task. And this takes in two parameters. One is the object, which we have, uh, the single entity, to do entity. And the next is the integer. So integer here uh, is basically the data type of uh, the unique ID which we're using. And in our case, the unique ID is the integer ID. So we need to mark the ID uh, by saying that you know, this one is unique, which we do by the ID annotation. So now this uh, shows that, you know, uh, in our to-do entity, ID is the unique key or the primary key for this scenario. So this is all we have to do. And in the next video, we'll actually start implementing uh, the database and we'll see that in very less amount of code, uh, we can actually, by changing, you know, very simple things in our to-do service, we'll be actually writing or finishing using Derby and then we can start moving on to the SQL database uh, part. So that was it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.